Hi, and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the time I worked at a theater. And in this instance, I will I will actually name the company. It was the Widener Center in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Widener Center for Performing Arts. I have them linked below. So we're going to talk about this. This is a really fun opportunity I had. Um, unfortunately, I was only there for one night, so this will be a shorter video. So. At the end of, I believe it was my sophomore year of high school, I was talking with a friend and saying, oh yeah, I need a job. Um, summertime is coming and I'm about to turn 16, so it'd be nice to have some income so I can buy a car. And so my friend said, hey, I know somebody at the Widener Center and they are always looking for young people uh, during performances to be a runner. I said, oh, that sounds fantastic. Please put me in contact with that person. And he did. So I, you know, thank you so much to that particular friend. Again, I'm not gonna name names. I uh, talked with the woman who was in charge and we had a great phone conversation. This was back in the 90s when you could just kind of get a job pretty easy. Uh, things have changed since then, obviously. So it was really fun. I talked with her. And she said, okay, great, you sound like a great uh, person. Come on by, the next show um, is How to Succeed in Business through June 25th to Ju July 3rd. I had to look up the dates because I couldn't exactly remember when this took place. And so thank you, Press Gazette, for um, having this documented. So it was June 25th to July 3rd of 1996. Uh, one thing I'm hoping throughout the show uh, is to give some historical context for people who might be a little younger and what was happening. So this was fantastic. And I show up, my mom had to bring me because I was only 15. And she said, I'll pick you up when it's all over. So she dropped me off. I walked in. I think I had to wear um, a white shirt with black pants and, and comfy shoes. That was very important, comfy shoes. And so I go to the desk where I was supposed to meet uh, the boss, which was, I believe, at the uh, ticket booth. And she was wonderful. I cannot remember her name. I don't remember even what she looked like. But she was, one, she was really, really nice and very patient with me. And she, one of the first things she said was, this is very fast paced. Again, that should have been a warning in my head. Like, okay, I need to, I need to make sure that I am on top of my game. For those of you who don't know me, <laughs> Uh, let's just say I did not take ballet <laughs> or anything where you had to be coordinated. So uh, those of you who are watching who do know me, uh, who have known me for a while, I'm a very clumsy person. So <laughs> you can imagine how well this evening went. Again, I cannot, I cannot stress enough how wonderful everybody that I encountered at the Winder Store. I cannot stress enough how awesome everybody was and how patient everybody was. So it was it was a great experience. I just want to be very clear. So uh, the manager shows me around and says, okay, as I said on the phone, your job is a runner. And what that really means is uh, pretty much like any theater, there are cash bars. Uh, for those of you who not, aren't sure what a cash bar is, it's basically a little bar where you can buy um, snacks or traditionally alcohol. This is Northeast Wisconsin. We're talking about so very a lot of old fashions. Let's just say that. Um, just kidding. There were a lot of like wine spritzers and, and soda, things like that, uh, rum and coke. So my job was uh, to be assigned to a few of the stations, uh, the cash bar stations, and work with the bartender and ask them, hey, are you low on anything? And that could be anything from, hey, I'm low on seltzer to I'm low on Diet Coke, I'm low on lemons. And I had to essentially write it down quick because I, I can't, hmm, my memory is not the greatest, my short term memory. So quick, write it down, run back to a, like the kitchen prep area and grab what I needed. In some cases, I think I did need to talk to somebody like, hey, I need, you know, like I said, the lemons or limes or salt or anything but actual beverages there was a big section of coolers and so I just had to basically grab it and take it back to that station and just run basically back and forth I was a gopher which was fine I had the energy I was almost 16 I could do it however what did I say I'm a clumsy person so the short version is after about three hours uh three four hours at the end of it, I was 
sticky <laughs> from having dropped so many things. So an example, I was going back and forth and bringing back, I was in the kitchen area, the prep area, getting, I think it was bottles of wine or bottles of champagne to bring back to one of the stations. Not the most expensive stuff, but it wasn't the cheap stuff either. Dropped it uh, through just being nervous and wanting to do a great job and just not being a very graceful person. I, you know, dropped that bottle. I dropped a number of glasses, <laughs> like wine glasses. And I, I don't know how much, I don't want to say damage, but I, I, I can't imagine how much lost product, lost inventory was due to just me being a, a clumsy person. And again, I have to reiterate, everybody there was so nice. They were so patient. You could tell they were getting frustrated because this clumsy kid can't bring back a simple glass. You know, I kept a smile on my face the whole time. Like, okay, looking at my watch, like I'm not gonna be called back. Like this, I bombed this interview. Like it was essentially almost like an audition. Funny, right? An audition at the theater, but it was something completely different. Um, just to see if I would be a good fit. And at the end of it, again, the patience of this woman, and she, I, I must not have been the first person who was clumsy, but good gosh, I don't think, I, I think I was the worst. And at the end of it, I said, I am so sorry. I made a mess of everything. I, this was a little outside of my skill set, and I'm, I'm so sorry for all of the mess I caused. Because there was a mess too. Somebody had to clean up all that mess, and I wasn't allowed because I had to keep going running. I had to run back and forth. So I felt so terrible for the people who had to clean up after me. And it wasn't just on tile floor. There were spills on the carpeted areas. So at the end of it, I'm I'm near tears and I'm just trying to keep a smile on a face, like just trying to be strong and I'm just apologizing. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I made a mess. This was a wonderful experience. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I've learned something about myself. And she said, yeah, you're right. This, we're not going to be calling you back, but we're still going to pay you. And I said, you don't. I mean, I can't. Why would you pay me at this point? <laughs> <laughs> probably gonna take all this out of the paycheck but I did get paid uh, I at the time it was probably four dollars an hour if this was 96 I'd say probably four four fifteen an hour <laughs> so that was not a very big check what fifteen dollars so oh god they were so wonderful and I this is this the lesson in this is you know always try your best no matter what try your best. Even if you're in the worst situation, try your best. Um, if it's a dangerous situation, then you really need to try your best so you don't get hurt. Um, but it's, fortunately, I was I was barely 16. I, you're still learning things about yourself. Your brain isn't even developed until you're 25. So I still had a good 10 years of developing and learning things about myself. And I always knew I was a clumsy person, but I thought it was just as I was growing. And I thought, okay, maybe by the time I'm halfway through middle school or high school, I'll be a little more uh, graceful. It's 25 years later and I'm still just as clumsy as I was. So I did not outgrow that. That's not something I outgrow. So lesson is uh try your best and understand really what's outside of your skill set and that's okay if it, if something is out of your skill set that's fine uh what i've always said is not everybody can do the exact same thing gosh we'd be so boring if everybody could do the exact same thing we need variety in this world like some people are really 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 graceful and they can handle like if you've seen a server at a restaurant and they've got plates all up and down their arms and they in their hands and they're carrying bot like glasses under here and they can do it I can't that's outside my skill set but I can do the marketing for that restaurant so it's really especially when you get into leadership roles you're really trying to see who can do what best and you utilize those strengths so as you're growing even at my age i'm still learning what is outside of my skill set a few years ago as i got into marketing i learned i'm not a graphic designer do not make me do that <laughs> so if it looks bad all of the things on this channel if, uh, with graphic design if it looks terrible it's because yeah i'm not a graphic designer and i did it come at me right so what i learned that night really is okay, I need to probably stay out of the, uh, you know, specifically um, parts of the service industry are just not for me. That's okay. That is okay. The great thing about that evening was, as you can see in the description, I was 10 feet away 
from Ralph Macchio. Again, this is 96, so this is just about 10, 12 years after the first Karate Kid came out. And how awesome. It was so great. After the show, um, as I was waiting for my mom to come pick me up, because I had to call her and say, come pick me up, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just want to go home and cry. Um, so <laughs> as, as I was waiting, Ralph Macchio came out. Uh, I, maybe this was before. I, maybe I don't remember. Um, but he did greet. Uh, he did a greet and was just talking to audience members. It was really neat. And I had, I had had such a crush on him when I was, you know, four to seven. Just he's karate kid. He's Ralph Macchio. And from what I saw, he seemed to be a really, really decent guy. Um, he was just really excited to be in the show and he was just talking with everybody and I was I got about 10 feet away I didn't get to actually meet him um but that was uh that's that was such a joy and and just reinforcing the like okay Daniel Sun is a really cool guy he's a really nice guy side note fun fact um Ralph Macchio named his son Daniel so Daniel Sun's son Daniel is Daniel Sun. On that note, um, thank you so much for watching. I've got descriptions in the uh, description below, links too. I've got other things besides descriptions in the description. Um, if you're in the Green Bay area, I do recommend going to the Widener Center. They are very, very wonderful people and they really put on a good show. Uh, so thank you so much. Have a great one. Bye.